Hi everybody, it feels really weird just to randomly be talking to my laptop like a crazy person but uh, I thought it would be prudent to just go through some of the things that you need to know in terms of topic one, the Cuban Missile Crisis. In your exam, this will be question one. So I thought before I do the uh, actual meat of the question, we should get into the glossary of the Cold War, what is it, um, where does it come from, etc, etc. This free recording software I'm using only allows me about 15 minutes to record, so I think what I'll do is I'll probably make two different videos. So what I'll do for now is we'll just go through this glossary. Um, I did explain the Cold War to you guys before we finished off last term. Uh, just a quick recap from grade 9. America and the USSR don't like each other, but they don't want to fight each other because they have nuclear weapons, and nuclear weapons basically have the capability to wipe out an entire country. So there's this kind of Mexican standoff where you've got these two superpowers, massive countries with lots of military and lots of economy, and they basically are standing face to face, and they are too scared to fire their weapons, but they also don't want to look weak by backing down. So that's basically the gist of what the Cold War is. Um, so let's go into the glossary and the terms so one of the terms that you need to be familiar with is the arms race which is a competition between the united states and the soviet union to manufacture the most nuclear weapons so it's all about who's got the biggest bombs and who's got the most bombs and it was always like this competition to see who can outdo the other one in technology and defense. So when America invented the atomic bomb, then you had Russia coming with a hydrogen bomb, and then you had America coming with a different kind of bomb, and Russia coming with a different kind of bomb, until it basically got to the point where they created something called the Tsar bomber, which is like literally the biggest nuclear bomb that was ever invented. It literally like sent fall out into this air like far up into the atmosphere and when America saw that they basically made a deal with Russia that they need to stop producing nuclear weapons because if they continue they'll end up wiping out the whole world. Um, the next thing and please keep in mind that this is not in order because um, for some uh, ungodly reason I don't this. I put this thing in um, alphabetical order. So certain things that are only supposed to come later are now coming first. So let me just see if I can make this one thing on the page. Don't make fun of me for not knowing what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. So if we go down here, the next word that is on your glossary but only comes later is the Bay of Pigs invasion. So I will be explaining this as I go through the Cuban Missile Crisis. But basically it's a whole thing of America being afraid of um, Cuba becoming communist and therefore they sponsor Cuban rebels to basically try and overthrow the democratically elected president of Cuba. Uh, it ends in failure, and it's a massive embarrassment to um, America. So, I just noted... Okay, apologies about that. There was a notification on my phone. Um, so, I, as I was saying, I just noticed that um, I included an image here. Uh, the reason I included the image is that a couple of years ago, there was a question in the paper, and my kids were unable to answer it. So I thought, okay, let's put this image here, and then in class we would break it down, kind of see what's happening in the image. So, unfortunately, we can't be in class, so this is what I'm going to do. We are going to break down the image, and you won't be able to give me answers. Uh, but what we can do is we can 
analyze the image and I'll give you a few moments just to think it through yourself and then I'll tell you the answer. So over here in this image, you can see that there is a bear. And if you look at the bear, you will see that there's a symbol on the bear's back. This basically means that this bear actually is not an actual bear. It stands for something else. Um, and then over here, you can see an eagle. Uh, on the eagle's back, you can see stars. Now, that is very deliberate. If you know anything about flags, you'll know who that eagle represents. And then in the middle here, you can see they're both standing on the edge of a cliff. And you can see there's a little paper over here that says irresponsible statements. So, let's break it down. I'll give you about 10 seconds to think who could these animals represent. Bing, 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 time up. So let's see, did you guess right? So firstly, if you look at the corner here, you know, or you should know, that the national bird or the national animal of America is an eagle. The eagle represents um, this idea of freedom, of flying free, you know. And America is all about freedom. Uh, the reason we can also, in case we didn't know that, uh, we can infer that this eagle represents America is the fact that it has the stars on its back. Um, the flag of America has stars and stripes. So that tells us that this eagle represents the stars and stripes of America. Okay, now we get to the more difficult one that my students did not know in the past, which is why I had to do and I actually thought of a very clever way for them to remember it because everybody is apparently an alcoholic. There's a certain type of vodka that they sell at the shops and it's called the Russian Bear Vodka. And the minute I said that, immediately my students all back went crazy and they're like, okay, the bear represents Russia, the bear represents the USSR. So the national animal of the USSR is the bear. Oh, where's my, yeah, uh, is the bear. And in case you didn't know that, the cartoonist kind of makes it very obvious by putting the hammer and the sickle on the bear. So in case you didn't know that the national animal of Russia or the USSR was the bear, the hammer and the sickle, which is the symbol on the flag of the USSR, um, this is... Uh, telling you that the spear represents the USSR. Uh, too many S's. Okay, so uh, irresponsible statements, uh, that page flying in the middle, the fact that they are both on the cliff is basically referencing the fact that they are on the edge of war. Um, and the irresponsible statements, both of them are guilty of it, which is why it's in the middle. Uh, right, so sorry about that little tangent. I have ADHD. I cannot focus on anything for too long. I don't actually have ADHD, I don't think. But, um, so let's get back to the glossary. So the next word that you need to know, and in my opinion, one of the most important words you need to know. So when I see you in class, I want you to underline this word. I want you to highlight this word. It is going to come in. You are going to see it, and it's very important that you know what it means. So the word you will see is blockade or quarantine. Now the nice part about this word, especially if you get the word blockade, is that um, the, 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 the meaning of it is in the actual word. If you take away the aid part, you can see the word block. And what does it mean to block something? It means nothing can go past that point. So when... Uh, you have a blockade, you are sealing off a place to prevent goods or people from entering or leaving. Now, we are all in the midst of this coronavirus, you know, COVID-19, and I'm sure you've heard the word quarantine. Many of you have probably been in quarantine or self-isolation. Now, the word quarantine basically means nobody is allowed to go out and nobody is allowed to come in same as blockade 
Now, these words are used interchangeably throughout the Cuban Missile Crisis. Sometimes they'll use the word blockade, sometimes they'll use the word quarantine. What you need to know is that they both mean the same thing. The next thing you need to know is the word brinkmanship, which is the tactic of seeming to approach the verge of war in order to persuade one's opposition to retreat. Now, what does that mean? Uh, earlier on, I explained the word, uh, or I mentioned the word, a Mexican standoff. Uh, I actually, actually, it's very easy to see in this one video by uh, Key and Peel. So just give me a second, let me go and get that video for you. Okay, so this video is literally five minutes and we have five minutes left. And unfortunately, the software I'm using is free. So it's not going to allow me to uh, put on the audio, unfortunately. But you can find it yourself. Um, the video is called Mexican Standoff by Key and Peel. So you can just research that yourself and you can see it with the sound. But you get the basic idea. I'm not going to show you the whole video, just part of it. Alright, so that is a Mexican standoff. Now, unfortunately, you wouldn't have been able to hear any of the audio because of the uh, fact that the software is free. Maybe I'll buy it. We'll see. Um, so basically, that's what brinkmanship is. So brinkmanship is the idea of everybody is trying to one up the other, like trying to make the other one so scared that they back down. Um, but the problem is it gets to a point where somebody has to back down but nobody wants to because the first person to back down is basically like the loser and neither america or the ussr wanted to be the loser so during the cuban missile crisis they were always pushing each other to the edge trying to get the other one to back down but the truth of the matter is they were both absolutely terrified of nuclear warfare because it would have led to what they call mutually assured destruction or MAD. I think it's probably in the glossary somewhere. So the idea that if America launches a missile, then USSR will launch a missile and then they'll both be destroyed. So they wanted to avoid that, but neither of them wanted to look weak. So they kept pushing each other and pushing each other and pushing each other until one of them stood down. So um, the next thing you need to know is the word capitalism. Um, sometimes they ask this when they ask you to define terms. It should be a familiar word to you because we did it in grade 11. Um, basically, capitalism is an economic system based on private ownership rather than government ownership and a free market system. So in other words, it's for profit. It's the idea that anyone can sell anything, anyone can buy anything, anyone can make a profit. Um, the idea is we won't have government owning everything. Um, it's basically the opposite of communism, the opposite of nationalism. It's the idea that whatever you work for, that is yours. The problem with capitalism is it's a very unequal uh, economic system. 
because some people will always have more than others. So I am running out of time. I've got about 15 seconds left. So I'm going to stop this video here and then continue it in the next video. Ciao!